How's it everyone? Week 4 of our 7 weeks on the journey together. How's it going with those personal devotions? I hope you are committed to it. It was great to write them and to share with some other guys who wrote them. I hope they are beneficial. I hope also that, that you are, you've had time to really personally connect with God. Um, be those intellectual thoughts that we spoke about last, last week. Now today what I want to do is I want to speak about your emotional health. I think this is so important. Companies have, um, have go through courses where they try and predetermine how people will respond emotionally in, in certain situations. And it is said that, that even if you don't have an high IQ, if you, if you are intelligent, emotionally intelligent, if you are emotionally mature, you'll be able to achieve a lot in life. So it's very impo- important as we think about how, how God changes us. Um, if we've been hurt in the past or whatever it is, for us to kind of project into the future where we want to be and allow God to build us in that way. So let's start by just saying this. We all have emotional wounds. And they take a really long time to heal. It won't take a lot for every one of us to think about one time in our lives where people said something, did something, and we're still struggling to get the dagger out of our hearts because we were just wounded so deeply. And those are emotional wounds. Now there's good news here. Psalm 147 verse 3 has this to say. Speaking about God, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. There are five steps to emotional health that we can derive from Scripture. The first one is very, very important because most of us, especially those of us who are introverts, struggle with this. We have to reveal our hurts. I have to reveal my hurts. Listen to what the psalmist writes in Psalm 39 verse 2. So I remain utterly silent, not even saying anything good. But my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me. While I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Psalmist writes, he says, Hidden wounds are like hot coals. Um, If they do not heal, if they don't calm down, they will fester. These wounds will become worse and worse and worse. Hot coals burn and eventually you want to let go of them. People try to deal with hurts in the following ways. They hide their hurts. But then... These hurts have ways of coming out in other ways. Passive aggression behavior or your family suffers the, f- the frustration that you have with someone else. Um, some people run. They think if they can run away from their hurts. But it's, n- it's, it's never that simple because sometimes they run away from this thing into the next thing. I mean, some people try and hide their pain. They try and run away from their pain by n- getting involved in sexual practices or taking drugs or stuff like that and that only adds to the pain ultimately and the pain gets worse others ignore their hurts but you can't ignore your hurts because it hurts (laughs) it's as simple as that Um, others try to cover it up but hurts have a way of showing up even in the most inopportune time Um, you cannot hide your hurts one day the top will blow no matter how you try and hide it hurts will show up The best way to deal with hurts is to be honest about your pain. Be honest with yourself. Admit the hurt. Um, Years ago, there was a song that was sung, and and the line went like this, No man is an island. (laughs) And that's just the truth. None of us are islands. None of us are completely self-sufficient emotionally. We need help. And the help starts by, by actually just admitting and saying, I'm hurt. Be honest about your hurt. The second thing is you need to be honest about unforgiveness. And many of us have suffered for years and years and years because we are bitter and angry against someone who has done something to us. We carry the hurt and it's exacerbated because we won't let go of the hurt and we won't won't forgive people. So be honest about it. I am like this because I cannot forgive that person. So be honest with yourself. Secondly, be honest with God. God, this is the way I feel. Even if you have been disappointed by God, um, God, God's okay with you being honest with Him. Go and read the Psalms. The Psalmists often say to God, God, you're not fair. God, you have been like this or like this. 
But here's the thing about God. God feels your pain. Um, that's why he sent his son. I, I, I can't, it blows my mind. It makes me want to worship when I think so many people on the earth. And yet God cares for each one of us individually. God is concerned about the hurt in your life. He knows and he cares no matter how you feel about him caring. He's not going to stop caring. Thirdly, you have to be honest with one other person that you trust. It's not always possible to be honest with the person who you feel have hurt you. The person may have died or the person may be unapproachable or something like that. But all of us have a safe person that we can talk to. Talk to that person. Healing happens when you tell other people. Listen to what the psalmist writes in Psalm 32 verse 3. When I kept silent, my bones waste, wasted away through my groaning all day long. God doesn't want you to keep silent. He doesn't want you to be trapped in the middle of your pain. Secondly, release those who have hurt you. I, I, I remember sitting with a couple in my, in my study years ago when I was a youth pastor. And the one had to forgive the other one. And that person turned around and shouted at the person and said, I will never, ever, ever, ever forgive you. My heart just went cold. I mean, we, we have to learn to forgive. And honestly, that lady hurt herself more than what she hurt her husband. Um, here's the thing. You have to let it go. All of us only have so much emotional energy. And, and to spend it on being bitter and resentful means we don't have any good stuff to give to the other people around us. It makes us bitter, resentful people. Ask yourself, do I want to get well or do I want to get even? Do I want to get well or do I want to get even? Now here's a secret. Getting even will not take away your pain. Forgiveness, as illogical as it may sound, has that ability. Um, and here's what should motivate you. Um, there's this beautiful passage in Romans 5 verse 8 where Paul writes to the Romans, he says, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You can forgive. Yes, let me say it again. You can forgive because God forgave you. God demonstrated his own love while we were still sinners, Christ died. You can forgive because you've been forgiven. Ephesians 4 verse 31 puts it, um, says this, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Note the get rid of. Get rid of all this other stuff. Instead, be kind, forgiving just as Christ forgave you. Forgiving them for your own sake, not so that they could be released. Forgive them so that you won't be trapped by unforgiveness or the thing that happened years ago. Um, you have to let it go. I, I read an article this last week, which I shared with the elders, um, about this young lady whose father was killed by Eugene de Kock, assassinated by Eugene de Kock. And the two of them were facing off, um, and he asked for her forgiveness. And she looked at him and said, I'll only forgive you if you give me a hug. I don't think he ever in his life had that kind of response. I mean, how many people have he killed? We don't even know. But yeah, was this young adult lady who had never known her father because this guy killed her father in cold blood. And, and she opens her arms and says, I'll only forgive you if you give me a hug. I mean, what a, what a beautiful picture. We, I mean, God released her from the anger and resentment. And I'm sure it, burnt, it broke his heart as he drove away from there. You only hurt yourself through unforgiveness. This is what God says about your hurt. Psalm 56 verse 8. You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your, in your book. Let's leave getting even to God. I mean, let God deal with it. Romans 12 puts it like this. Never pay back evil for more, with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. 
Dear friend, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Trust God to balance the books and let it go. Just let it go. Don't, don't hold on to it. Just let it go. I mean, wh why? Why should you let it go? Why should you forgive? Well, because God forgave you. God forgave me. I, I should let it go because God forgave me. Um, I think the second reason is somewhere in the future I'm going to need forgiveness. I'm going to unintentionally do something that will hurt another person. And I will need forgiveness then. So I can't put myself better, better than the person that I need to forgive. And thirdly, that's the only way to get well. Um, if, you want, if you want to be emotionally transformed, you want to be emotionally well, it, this is the way. It, it's not by holding on to things that only hurt you more and more and more. There is no other way. Reveal your hurt and release your hurt. Thirdly, thirdly, replace old lies with God's truth. As a thing, for us to be emotionally healthy, we're going to have to practice for the rest of our lives to be more and more emotionally healthy. Because every now and again, um, the brain is going to remind us about something that happened in the past. Um, I read this the other day. The brain is an amazing, amazing recorder. We remember, um, we remember what people said about us. You are dumb. You are fat. Remember that on the school playground or a teacher said something. Um, I, I remember one young guy who caught his dad having an affair with a woman and going to tell his mother about it. He was just, he was just 12 years old. He didn't know any better. And when his mother kicked the father out of the house, his father stopped in his bedroom, walked into his bedroom, looked him in the eye and said, you are the reason why I'm leaving. What a lie. That was rubbish. Father couldn't control himself and now he's blaming his son. God wants to release you from those thoughts. But you're going to have to reprogram the mind. So in Romans 12, 2, we read this. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which, which is good and pleasing and perfect. God wants to take the hurts. He wants you to help you think in a new way. And the net result of that would be that you will know exactly what God wants for you in life. Now, how does God change the way that we feel? We have to change the way that we think. We have to get our mind right. So how does this happen? Well, first of all, you need to pray. <laughs> um, the problem is we, we are so subjective. When we are hurt, we, we struggle to break out of that. Hey, bring those hurts to God. Just to say, Lord, I mean, even now, even now as, as, we are, as we contemplate this teaching, why not write on your little, on, on, on your notes there, this thing, this thing, this thing. I need to bring this to God. Secondly, fill your mind with God's truth. Replace, replace lies with truth. Yes, truth. Hebrews 2 verse 11 says, So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same Father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. If you've been disappointed by family, you feel alone and, alone and isolated by friends, well, Jesus says, hey, um, you know, I'm not ashamed to call you my brother, my sister. I know exactly who you are, but, but, but we're family. Um, we're friends, you know. Make, the, make Jesus' opinion the one that matters the most. Not other people's opinion. And that only happens if you pray and if you spend time in God's Word. Fourthly, refocus on the future. Stop looking in the past. I always say to people, you can't go into the future by looking in the rearview mirror. I mean, if you had to drive like that, you're going to ride up the backside of another car. <laughs> you can't look in the mirror the whole time. You've got to look where you're going. And that's what God wants for you. He wants, he wants you to have a great future. And, and therefore you need to be released from all these emotions that force you from, to look in the rearview mirror. How? Forgive people whether they deserve it or not. Let it go. Ask God to bring good out of evil. God has a way of doing that, even the bad experiences that we have. Um, God says in James, 
We mustn't be surprised that these things happen to us, but they build character and hope. It gives us a picture of the future, away from the pain and the hurt. Don't build walls around you. Don't, don't lock people out. Um, I mean, don't, don't, don't let the hurts isolate you as a person. And then seriously, look at the great things that God has for you in the future. God doesn't want you to remain where you are. He, wants, he has a future for you. Proverbs 4, 25 puts it like that. Look, puts it like this. Look straight ahead. Look straight ahead. Not behind you. Look straight ahead. And fix, you fix your eyes on what lies before you. You have a future. Because God is a God of future. Lastly, <clears throat> God wants your hurts to bring healing to others. Have you ever thought about it? God can use your hurts. Listen to what it says in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 4. He comforts us in all our troubles. Talking about the Holy Spirit. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God gives us. The Bible also has this to say in chapter 5 of the same book, 2 Corinthians verse 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, the new life has begun. And that speaks about transformation. And God doesn't want you to be stuck in the past, um, carry the emotional scars from the past, the hurts, the injuries from the past. He wants to give you a new life full of joy, not a life full of damaged emotions, joy and peace. That's God's plan for you. So let it go. And, and let God use the hurts that you have to be a blessing to people in the future. God does not want your old life to determine your future. He wants the future to be fresh and complete, completely new. Let's pray together. Lord, as, as we meet in small groups this week, I know that there are many people who carry the hurts from the past in a very deep way. Sometimes it's so deep, Lord, we can't even see it. Will you help us to release it? So that we can be emotionally transformed. And that we can have joy with the people around us, not trapped by bad experiences from the past. The glory and the honor of your name, Lord. Will you bring healing? Will you put good people together? As people share now in the small groups together, give them great relational time together so that people can release and be released to be the people that you've called them to be. In Jesus' name, amen.